The Kate Daly Show starts now. Oh, man, not another election. Why do we have to choose our leaders? Isn't that what we have the Supreme Court for? Welcome back to the Kate Daly Show. I'm Kate Daly. Glad to have you listening in today. The time is oh, 3.06. Wow. On a beautiful Tuesday in the heart of uh, February. Oh, my gosh. It's almost Valentine's Day this weekend. And don't forget, guys, it's Valentine's Day this weekend. Bye. All I'm going to say is that the women know. <laughs> <laughs> that this day occurs. So just remember, okay? And uh, we ha- we would be remiss if we did not mention 316 Carpet Cleaning. Of course, home of the low water, fast drying, deep cleaning. It's eco-friendly. It's safe for kids and pets. And now for a limited time, you can purchase three rooms, get the fourth one for free. Call 790-4573 or go to 316carpetcleaning.com. They are a great sponsor of the show, by the way. And I am Kate Daly. I'm glad to have Randall Hinton and Thomas Dykes in from Pyrolytical Radio. How are you guys? Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. How are you? That's how we talk in Southern Utah. <laughs> no, we say fur. Fur? Yeah. I, I can't kick that habit now. Fur. I never used to say that. Is that like a coat? Yeah. Do you oh, say you know, one, fur. two, three, fur? Yes. I know. It's so funny, isn't it? Anyway, the little things you pick up, but uh, I don't even know. Is that a Utah thing? I'm probably it exists other places too, I'm sure. Um, okay. So three stories at three. Um, these are the ones that caught my eye today, and they're very random. This one... It's a little frightening, I would have to say. 25 million shipment of U.S. artillery arrives in Lebanon. The U.S. envoy vows continued aid to Lebanon through ice, throughout the ISIS war. You know, they send this money in, and it always makes me a little... I, I don't know. I, I just, you know, we had Bing West on yesterday, who's written 10, bo- 10 books on war. Hmm. And I wouldn't, I mean, he's pretty gung-ho on the war front because he's Bing West. I mean, the, he's the guy's in his mid-70s. That he's, sounds like he's, a military name. Yeah, I mean, come on. Colonel you know, West. No, can't you just Bing picture West. this guy barrel-chested and just <laughs> strong as an ox? And, you know, he's one of those guys, which is great. He's a, he was a great guest. I didn't agree with everything he said um, on the military front or whether we should be in all of engaged in all of these wars. Um, but his take was, you know, be the biggest dog and and we, we mm. retain our number one status uh, of defending ourselves. Um, but this this story, a ship loaded down with 25 million worth of U.S. weaponry mostly artillery, has arrived in Beirut today. Uh, the first shipment of U.S. military aid to Lebanon to fight against ISIS. I just, you know what? I just don't always think it ends up in the right hands. I don't think we should be yeah. sending all of this. I'm sorry, I just don't. And is, it, is it to fight ISIS or to create the next group? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I can't even say anymore. Yeah. yeah. But the, the nice sentence, thing, though, is yes. these weapons never end up in the wrong hands. There you go. There you go. Yeah, never. That never, never happens. Um, so here we go. Lens Crafters <laughs> offers nine marital status choices. You didn't know there were nine, right? Nine, because wow. You're used to seeing single married, single or married, right? That's pretty much what you see. Okay, here we go. Here's our nine choices. You ready for this? Annulled, divorced, domestic partner, legally separated, married, never married, polygamous, <laughs> widowed, or my favorite and yours, the interlocutory. Huh? What? <laughs> We're what? Interlocutory. Yes, what because we want to help you feel included too. Um, the inter. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? I actually don't. Inter know. what? We've all become accustomed to intrusive questions, right, about our personal lives when we're uh, accosted by the endless forms. Um, but this is life as we know it grounding to a halt. Uh, years ago, doctors asked about your marital status so they would know where to send the bill, and they asked about your race and ethnic background solely because there were certain diseases and disorders uh, for some ethnicities, right? And so the whole uh, term of interloc- interlocutory, never heard this one, um, you can choose that instead of married, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to even get down to the bottom of what this actually is because they never really describe it. Um, but they said, you know, if you checked that instead of married, um, it's not your fault because the checks box, the check boxes are so tiny. Um, but you know, first person to figure out what interlocutory means, uh, probably gets a prize. I'm guessing interlocutory. 
Yeah, it's very strange. They never, apparently some sort of legal purgatory between marriage and divorce. Uh, I don't, yeah, I Have don't know. Have you ever heard the saying? Dictionary, my dictionary app says, of the nature of pertaining to or occurring in conversation or interjected in the main course of speech. So, yeah, I don't they know. They say it's some hell between marriage and divorce <laughs> and uh, it will, yeah, I, I, I don't so, even, so nobody even knows what between. it means. you're between. You're between. You're betwixt and between. What can it's we say? complicated. They Good should just have that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they just have a it. box that says I'm complicated? I don't know. It'd be yeah. easier. They have to come up with all these I, stupid I wonder terms. if they're just, they're just having a, a little bit of a, oh my a joke to see how many people they get to say they're in their You're probably right. No, you're probably right. And you guys have our third story. Yes. Correct? Okay, let's yes. hear it. What's the third story today? So, in um, in New or uh, New Mexico, that's uh-huh. right. There is a sheriff who, for a change, not since like the '90s, has right? this happened, where the sheriff has gotten in the middle of an IRS um, seizure. The, so the IRS came in to seize this property. It was a rental property, and they they just barged in. To this house where uh-huh. the renter was, you know, a young mother with kids at home. They're not having a home. seizure. They're conducting a seizure. Yes. Got it. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Keep going. And and, <laughs> and so she called the police because she didn't know what was going mm-hmm. on. Okay. And, and so basically the sheriff showed up and he stood his ground and said, no, get out of here, U.S. Marshals. Nice. Until, until the property owner gets due process, you don't touch this property. Wow. Well, yeah. And they backed down. The U.S. Marshals. They, they and that were, was kind of in the Bundy situation. Same. True. Now, this true. this property owner, the IRS says owes them a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And so he kind of has a history similar to the Bundys where the government claims this, the property owner claims this, and then, you know, our local police department is supposed to get in between them so, and protect us. And right. I, I've told you before, I had a conversation with a former state representative. We talked about nullification, and he says... It's great to talk about it, but he says at some point, nullification has to be enforced physically. So that's what the sheriff did. He right. got in between the citizen and the feds. Okay, I love this. If we ever lose that, we're, we're done. Right, well, that, we're, that's exactly... We're one step away. That's exactly what every sheriff is supposed to be, because they are, they are who we elect mm-hmm. to represent us. Protect us. To protect <laughs> us. We physically vote for them to Her. be our gun, mm-hmm. whatever, if we need their, their assistance, including against the federal government. Ooh, and so, so the sheriff, yeah, I mean, this is, this is what they're there for. This is our last protection though. People don't realize this. Yeah. This is our very last protection against the federal government. And, and so the sheriff, I mean, he's doing his job. He's standing up and he's saying, no, IRS, if you think he's really done something wrong, you shouldn't have a hard time convicting him in court. Right. So why don't you do that? You know, if this is really, if it's really that big of a deal, because I mean, think about it. Mm -hmm. If you're someone, you have a dispute with the federal government. If the sheriff in this case hadn't stood up, then that guy would have just lost his, his property, maybe his sole or, or main means of income. How do you fight to get your stuff back if, if they've (laughs) seized it all? Good luck. And and, and that's, that's the way the IRS works. If you don't play by their rules, you're going, you're not going to be able to fight them because you don't have the ability to do it. The sheriff, on the other hand, said, no, wow. we're not going to stand for Well, that. he just said, look, I'm not trying to stand against the feds. I'm trying to protect my system from not getting due process. That's not, he's not being a, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a, a renegade. He right. just wants due process to be given to one of his constituents. And the thing that's Isn't interesting. Isn't it sad that he has to do that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's Isn't a good it thing. sad that he has to remind our federal government about due process and it, giving the person that what's ability? That? Yes. What? Seriously. Um, constitutional oath. The, the county sheriff takes a U.S. constitutional oath of office he, to protect and defend the Constitution. So it's funny that the local sheriff is defending the Const- U.S. Constitution against the U.S. government. And you know what? The, <laughs> the federal government. Oh, the government. irony. The yeah. Irony. The, the national is, government. The, the yeah. oath of enlistment that a soldier takes, he promises two things in the opening. I took it as a vet. I took mm-hmm. the oath to defend the constitution against all enemies foreign and domestic which that and would include domestic. our government mm-hmm. and also to follow the orders of the president of the united states but what when they, what happens when they fundamentally contradict well you go with the first clause which is to defend the constitution cuz following the president comes after that so in a contractual language my first duty is to uphold the constitution i'm still under that oath as far as i can consider 
I mean, yeah. I took that oath. So right. I, I just feel like that's my first duty. And Even so, as a non-military did. person, because Dallas says this all the time on the show. He took the oath and yada, yada. And I give him a hard time. And sometimes I play battle him of the Republic when he's saying it. And I get it. But, <laughs> but, but this is my problem with it is that, <laughs> and I don't mean to mock it. It's just, it's just that once you're duty is over as a military person. Do you still feel that stands? Do you feel like it, it, there's something about that that needs to still stand or would you just do it regardless? Cause I think a lot of non-military folks would do that regardless. I think it's funny that would live that oath, that, that, um, restriction is on the feds that we can hold them to it. That's why the constitution exists to spell out the limitations on the feds. Mm-hmm. So we are the keepers of the constitution as George Washington said. So we're their boss we get to hold them to their contract. The Constitution is their contract. So mm-hmm. that's our duty as people. So the Supreme Court is not the final authority on the Constitution of the United States. I am the people. Not you, Thomas. Personally, I am. <laughs> it's up the to me. If it was, here, if it was only a dictatorship and I was the dictator, we would... <laughs> I'd like to be king. <laughs> Just for a day. I'd fix all the... No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I always wonder what somebody would do in office. You know, at the beginning of the show, we were playing the John Stoddart ex-CIA uh, mm-hmm. tape. Did you hear that? Did you guys yes, hear that? Yes, part of it, yeah. And very revealing. And I, was, I really wasn't trying to get people to um, walk away from the Republican Party or the Democrat Party. I consider myself still a Republican to some extent. Um, I don't, I'm not anti-parties, but I just want people to be more informed about them because we tend, I really do think in my heart of hearts that, that the, the overall public tends to join these political parties because of the social issues at hand. They look at gay marriage, they look at abortion, they look at these, these dividing sentiments, these issues, and they say that explains my party. Uh, but it's not really what they're actually doing in office. I don't know. To bring in part of our last hour's conversation, mm-hmm. the, the voters do to elections what the standardized test does to our students, our children. Ooh. Say that again. The, <laughs> that's, really, the, that's really important. Say that yes, again. Yes, the voters, voters do to our, in the elections, mm-hmm. what we do, what standardized tests do to our children in that we claim, right, the Republican Party is XYZ, so then all Republicans are XYZ. All Democrats are XYZ. And that's the way a lot of us try to so associate. True. And that's, that's, that's the way standardized testing does with, with children. Here, we're going, we're going to do this because this is standard across the board. We don't look at the fact that this child is you know, one way or another. We don't do any indiv- individualization a, yeah. or, or research. It's just... This is the way it's going to be, and so I'm going to vote Republican. So half of our country feels this way, and the other half feels that way. Yeah, well, so what, what about easy. the small margin in between the haves? And the have-nots? <laughs> well, hmm. think about it. Are you guys members of a church? Yeah. Yeah, and I am too. And the Constitution declares I would never associate there, with you. You. <laughs> uh, on a religious <laughs> level. Too late. I've sullied your <laughs> reputation today. <laughs> and we're wearing Twitter t-shirts. Anyway, you really are. Yeah. Um, the Constitution acknowledges that the right, the free right of association is a human right. It's inalienable mm-hmm. to us. And so you guys, are, we're all in churches. Humans like to congregate into tribes and into groups and cults and sects and mm-hmm. everything. They like to, to group. And so, because there's strength in numbers. Like, to a certain extent, that's a good like thing. Like people that are listening sure. to this show right now. Yeah. But if I'm free nefarious, sure. if I'm nefarious and I know that humans are this predictable, that they love groupthink, and Mm -hmm. groupthink can be manipulated, Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm going to buy up the media. Mm -hmm. I'm going to control those who put out the policies. And I'm going to basically say, look, you're all too, you're all in one of two camps. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's some independents. They stink. But there's the reds and the blues, and I'm going to manipulate them, and I'm going to do it through the party structure. So we as humans need to be really sensitive to the fact that we can be manipulated very easily. Call in 673-1450, 888-673-1450. Of course, we'd love to take your call on this. So what did you think when he, when John Stoddard, ex-CIA agent, this is in the late 80s, he was talking about the A team and the B team. He was saying the A team is the Republican team. They do what the establishment wants. And the B team, the, the Democrats, is what they do when they want to throw us a bone. I do feel a little differently about that because I think in some of our um, Democratic eras of the presidency, um, we lose... A, a, a huge amount of liberty as well. I don't know that they're, that I would classify them as the B team. I think I classify them both as the A teams. But what was your take on that? A team one and A team two. There we go. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, I don't. Yeah, I mean they do as much damage in the presidency as the other. Yeah, well, like like he was 
talking about, or maybe it was you that was, that was mentioning it, the part that I got to hear. Um, you have presidents that succeed or s- <laughs> their successors to other mm-hmm. presidents and no substantial policy changes happen. No, we they go don't go back and Republican to re- Democrat. retroactively change anything. Yeah. It's just like, okay, well now it's my turn to do whatever right. I want, but I'm not going to overrule or, or okay, case or, in point. We, the next president that goes in, my guess will be a Republican. That's my guess. Yeah, I, I could be wrong though. It could be Hillary. Well, so, the Republicans anyway. just took over Congress. I just threw so. up. But it could be Hillary. And okay, I just <laughs> can't just stand her. Your, I just threw up. Yeah, I just really did. And so <laughs> let me get over that. Okay, I'm done. So okay, so if if whoever gets in, Obamacare will not be repealed. No, it will not go anywhere. You may see minor adjustments to appease the people and make them happy. But we finally got re- it in there. Yeah. Even the Republicans are telling it. Well, that's just not something we can take on. You know, we do need something. Haven't you heard this? We need something. We cannot just take it out. Oh, my gosh. Even though when it was going in, they were calling it diabolical. Yet now that it's in, well, it's not too bad. I mean, we have to Especially make some major overhauls. Power, yeah, like, there should be major nice changes. But I can't believe how many people right now are saying once our guy gets in everything will be good and i'm thinking are you up in the night like do you live in a cave i was listening to the first hour and just real quick i found an article about reagan's um, american policy team mm-hmm. it says the same people have resurfaced to fight the global war on terror negroponte abrams reich john bolton oliver north kagan same guys with reagan that helped those produce those scandals here they are again wow hi caller welcome to the show Caller, you're on. Well, that's okay. just part. I apologize. Whatever. I just wanted you're to so tell you about these collaborators that <laughs> were setting foreign policy in the 80s, right. 90s, the aughts, and they're there today. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to remember his name. I was telling Thomas about this, but one thing that I, I see this photo, and it always just like this image burned into my mind of, of the Ford in the mm-hmm. Ford administration. And you have him meeting with the, the Soviet ruler at the time. That I can't remember his name right, right. after Khrushchev. Anyway, but in the background, smiling with this really cheesy smile is Rumsfeld. And here he is there under the Ford administration. He's young. Then he was in the Defense Department with Reagan right. and George Bush Sr. And then he's the head of the Defense Department with George W. Bush. Is it any wonder that nothing substantially changes? You know, we let, because as an elected official, you go in, you know, I, I, I worked for a, mm-hmm. a local um, government body for a while and- you're you're working with a whole bunch of other you know quote unquote right. bureaucrats, you or or you you're working you're you're funded you're taking care of of things that the governing body needs, and there's a handful of officials that are changed out with an election, mm-hmm. but the rest of the body continues on unless unless an elected official comes in and says no I'm clearing house you guys are all fired I'm going to get this new guy he understands oh, yeah. it I'm- like the movie Dave. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's but he that's hires never. in his accountant friend and he fixes everything. Why can't we yeah. have that? Come but, on, but that'll never happen because you know, they won't. they don't want to rock the boat. They're mm-hmm. like, okay, things are going. I'm going to make a couple changes on the surface, but everything on the whole yeah. is going to stay the same. You know, it's it's interesting. Okay, now let me let me put it out there, pretty frankly, because I think this is what a lot of people feel. I'm a Republican. The Democrats are in office. Hate the Democrats. They're the evil party. The Republicans, the good party. The Republicans, the good party, that is all the conservatives that want this nation to be moral and good. And we're fighting for liberty. And I think a lot of people believe this. And it's okay to believe this. I'm not saying don't. But the problem is, is when I see people on Facebook, they get on Facebook and they say, I can't wait till my guy's in there so everything (laughs) is restored. And I would love it to be good against evil in like a really great movie, right? Good against evil, my guy, your guy. As soon as your guy's out, everything will be restored and everything will be great. And our problem is, is that's not the case. I would rather know the truth and make an informed decision based on knowing what the inner workings of those offices are, rather than just assuming it's good guy versus bad guy and uh, Republican versus Democrat. It's just not a fair depiction anymore. We ha- we have to be smarter than that, and we have to understand what's really going on. Because in this day and age, at the information that we have at our fingertips, you cannot sit there and idly think that that's the case anymore. You just can't. Sure. Hi, caller. Welcome to the show. Kate, it all starts in high school. <laughs> it does. It <laughs> take me back. <laughs> all right, let me take, take you me back. back. So, so let's go back to high school. Mm-hmm. Here's what happens in high school, especially if you've lived in a small town. We, okay. we create this thing called us against them. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And it's all about us. And, you know, I probably partook in that a lot, but then mm-hmm. I started officiating sports about 15 years ago, high school level. And when you're, when you're an official, you really, a lot of people are going to fall out their chairs, but you don't have an agenda. Your agenda is to just get out of there without getting accosted by some locals in your paycheck. <laughs> we uh, take our sports you know. very seriously, caller, okay? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. But you, you really you really don't care who wins and a lot of times you're not you know, you just you just do not care who wins. I mean I've never cared who won a game when I've officiated. But as an impartial advisor um, to sports, I look at it now different than I did, and I think, man, you know, those kids are playing hard on that team, and that kid's a great kid. That kid, he's a little, you know, he's taking some cheap shots, and this kid's great. But you look at the whole thing, and you can enjoy it for what it is. You can enjoy the sport. You don't have an agenda. And and I think in American politics, if you're completely independent, mm-hmm. you 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 can you can be objective and not have a dog in the fight, and you can look at it and say, hey, that politician looks like they're doing a good job. This politician is terrible. We should get rid of this group. But you're taught we're taught that in our society from day one. It's us against them, and that's why we never get any traction, because the Republicans versus Democrats is the greatest fraud perpetrated on the American public since the colonial times. Mm -hmm. And that's what's kept us in this mire, because people aren't honest enough to say, hey, the Republicans suck. Hey, the Democrats suck. (laughs) I'm a member of that party, but they just suck right now. My team versus your team. Yeah. Because We're going to score a touchdown this time. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Exactly. We're going to score a touchdown this time. And if the other team won, it's because they cheated or it's because the <laughs> officials were for them. Yeah. And so we're just taught that. We're trained in high school, and there's so much effort that goes into it. It continues on in sports with pro sports. We're just taught that, and then it spills over into politics, and nothing gets done because we see the world as us against them. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a great point. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, I appreciate I think, that. I think Call one of again. the problems, too, is that we define independent as someone who switches parties mm-hmm. from election to election. We have Democrats, Republicans, and independents, which will either vote Democrat or Republican, and they complain online. I thought Obama was going to do this, or Bush was that, and then he wasn't. But to me, an independent is someone who says, okay, here's the policy proposal. Mm-hmm. What's the actual right, lowercase r, right decision here? And, and we don't do that, because if we say, what is the actual right position, then we actually have to go discover what the right position, in accordance with principles and constitutionalism. I actually have to study this stuff. Instead <laughs> of, well, I'm independent, I'll vote Democrat this time. It's mm-hmm. like, that's not independence yeah. at all. Yeah. With the information age and what we're able to study and look at, and I really do think it's quite a blessing to have the information at our fingertips that we have. We didn't have that before. You had to haul right. yourself off to a library, which was very hard to do and very archaic. And try then, and find the book. Yeah, try and find the book. And a lot what? of books were out of published, uh, not being published anymore. And it was really hard to get the information. Don Fotheringham, when he wrote The President Makers, had to go to old books. He could not use the stuff that was out today. He had to go into people's basements and find books that were 100 years old that hadn't, been, that hadn't hardly been read and they were sitting in, in a pound of dust. Wow. This is what he had to do to get pictures, too. And I look at that and I think, you know, there's something about the information age that we have now. And there are websites, if you sift through them and you can find out that they don't have an agenda, or maybe they do. Maybe you are reading them and they actually do have an agenda. But do your research on them. This is where we are held accountable. We're held accountable with everything that we have at our fingertips today. I just find it almost an atrocity that we are not more informed when we can be. And I don't know whether it's, it's selective, selective ignorance, because when you have cognitive dissonance, you have a group of people that have two thoughts at the same time that they, they, they believe both thoughts and both thoughts are very contradictory. And I know because I've admitted to it. I've admitted to it on the air. Yes, I'm a Republican. Yet I know the backstory of what they do in in the real world. How can I still be a Republican? Because there's part of me that still hopes that that they're on the right course. There's part of me that that has believed for a very long time that they want the best, right? That it's the good party, right? The hope. The hope. And it's hard to get rid of that hope. But I do have hope in being informed. I do have hope in that. And when John Stockwell said, you know what? When the people up have an uprising, when the people really get angry or speak out, the establishment yields. The establishment that runs the presidency, that runs the parties, yields. 
We have to remember that because that actually gave me more hope in knowing that the people can do something if we're willing to get together and do it. That's strength in numbers. That's the only numbers we should be in. I I just, I wanted to kill a sacred cow real quick Uh Um, and just say everyone is biased. No matter how Mm -hmm. objective they're trying to be in presenting information or sharing information, everyone has a bias. Now you may, you may. Um, yeah. reflect a similar bias yeah. and so you you identify with somebody that has that bias but everyone and and everyone should know that because you're not ever receiving pure information from anybody it's always tainted with a bias and you need to be aware of that otherwise it can be easy to be led one way or the other mm-hmm. and i think it's real easy to get in this revolutionary mode where like we all read a lot of counter government mm-hmm. pro, you know po- uh, Who pieces does? Right. Yeah, in <laughs> articles, and and it gets your blood going because you're part of the counter, you know, attack. You're part of the revolution. Mm-hmm. You're, you're just a pawn in their in their hands. <laughs> yeah, Thomas. And, and so, well, I am sometimes, and I and I I think having a higher power is so critical here because honestly, as much information as there is, mm-hmm. I need a higher power to help me de- decipher all of it, and I need to know true. that the stuff that I think is correct from where I'm mm-hmm. at at this point in time. Maybe it isn't. And maybe I need to see the errors in the stuff that I think is the truth. Uh Because maybe someone has an agenda that maybe it's a plant from the other side. That is an excellent point. You know, uh, one of my, one of our uh, listeners of the show posed the question to me and I loved it enough. I I posed it on the show and it's, if you feel strongly enough about something, what can come along to change your mind? If you feel something is right, what can change your mind? And that was my answer was, you know what? I feel things pretty strongly. And if I feel it in my gut and my heart, um, my brain can go a million different directions as I decipher in information. And I, and I contemplate this information to decide how I feel about it. But the way I feel about it will usually dictate to me uh, what truth is and what it isn't. And so it's very, very difficult if I know something is right and I feel it in my heart and my gut, I can't just change my mind. I, I can't just change that. I could change my mind a little bit if, if fa- different facts come in. Where you get that hmm effect, but not to the degree that I am completely changed in what I know to be right. If I know it's right, it's almost unchangeable unless that change were to occur in my heart. If I really felt something uh, was off and, and, and different or supposed to be different. And I don't know how you guys would answer that, but I'll, I'll give you guys a second to think about that question because I think it's really important. We know things to be right. How can they change? What needs to happen to make those things change? Or maybe they shouldn't change. I don't know. But we're going to, we'll, we'll pay some bills. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We've got more interstate battery. Lead? Zeppelin? Oh, I'll take some lead. No, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. We still have minutes. What <laughs> We still have a minute. Sorry. Oh, okay. I just want to know if you, I should play some lead. I thought you should say lead. I'm like, what's she saying lead for? Utah. Yes, I Utah. actually like Led Zeppelin. Okay, so let's see. We, sh- we got to answer her question. You probably don't know what it is. No, what was the question? <laughs> uh, and you don't have to answer it either. And you can give me just a yes, quick answer. Yes, you do. We could go into something else. I shouldn't have brought it up. It was Thomas Lance. Thing. I have an answer on. for it. Um, if you know something is right, what does it take oh. to change your mind? That's right. Okay, you then you said a bunch of other I context. Love- I love philosophical questions on the show. I love that. Anyway. Okay, what's a good one? Uh, all my love? Uh, all, uh, all my love's good. Just do it. You don't have to think all. anymore about it. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. No, it, you got a lot on your mind. We remember doing this, running the oh, awards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was complicated, man. We got good at it, though. I'm going to play Pink Houses. I'm not even going to play Lead. <laughs> hey, Rio. What, what for? Call 888-673-1450. This is the Kate Daly Show. Oops. Oh, never mind. 